You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. 1.4 billion people with diverse ethnicities and languages with different dialects and mother tongues, India is home to the most diverse amalgamation of people on the planet. And the one force that has kept India driving and thriving in her over seven decade history of independence is her democratic soul and body. Democracy has been the one guiding principle that has provided India an edge over her geopolitical contemporaries. The one ideology that has proven to be the cornerstone for the country's compounding growth speed and the one philosophy that has kept her citizens united. Join us as we explore how India has been able to emerge as a model and champion of democratic ethos for the rest of the world. In 1947, when India achieved independence, a commitment was made to providing a democratic model of governance to her citizens. The country's constitution, which was implemented on January 26, 1950, laid the foundation for a democratic republic. India's commitment to upholding the democratic principles enshrined in the country's constitution sets it apart from its Asian neighbors. China, for example, has been rocked by massive protests against the CCP's decades-long misrule. Pakistan continues to live under the threat and sway of Pakistani generals. Sri Lanka has plunged into a deep economic crisis owing to mismanagement and corruption. An opposition to Myanmar's military coup in 2021 has seen many citizens imprisoned or sentenced to death. India, however, is thriving due to its deeply ingrained democratic underpinnings, which provide the drive and direction to take the right calls under all circumstances. Itna bada desh, mother of democracy, itni vividataye, itna samartha, pure vishwa ko. भारत को जानने का एक बहुत बड़ा अवसर है। India's constitution, which was recently termed by the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of India, D. Y. Chandrachud, as an egalitarian, socially transformative document, has been the one book that all Indians, irrespective of their color, creed, or political affiliations, have sworn allegiance to since the country's inception. The universal adult franchise, a power cum responsibility that enables every citizen over 18 years of age to indirectly participate in the government's decisions, provides equal rights to the previously marginalized and dispossessed people, their right to equality. This is proven to be the most significant step in nation building. From a panchayat election for selecting a village chief, to electing the Prime Minister of the country. All three tiers of Indian governance have elections on a periodic basis. The Election Commission of India, an autonomous constitutional body, has been successfully organizing the elections across the country. This is no easy feat considering India had nearly 900 million eligible voters in the 2019 general election. I, I want to be clear that in my view, the number one pillar of democracy is elections. And on that, India scores extremely well. Now, many political scientists want to uh, claim that democracy also means having solid liberal institutions. And I broadly agree with that view. I do note there are some political scientists who disagree with that view. But I myself believe that liberalism is a fundamental requirement for running a quality democracy. On that score, India is a relatively liberal country. It's an extraordinarily liberal country. <music> India has been regarded as one of the world's most successful electoral democracies. 
in addition to parliament and the electorate. There are other equally important institutions, including the judiciary and a free press, which provide checks and balances for the functioning of the country. India's judiciary is far more independent of democratic oversight than judiciaries in, as far as I know, any other liberal democracy in the entire world. As for press freedom in India, India has a very robust free press. The Indian democratic system guarantees the right to free speech and expression. It is a system where different interests and ideas are contested amicably. It is said that democracy and economic success go hand in hand. India would be a prime example. India is making large strides and fields across the spectrum today. India's democratic system, which is adopting progressive social and economic principles, continues to draw in business and people. With a strong bedrock of democratic ideals in place, Brand India is set to take off and be a shining star for the world to behold. Moving on, Sri Lanka has drawn a plan to shore up its revenue basket. While its restructured fiscal targets are set to provide it some relief in coming times, it is also on track to ensure additional loans apart from the 2.9 billion USD loan it has secured from the global lender, International Monetary Fund. The country has registered incremental progress since it plunged into an unprecedented economic crisis and aims to fully recover in coming months. Observers say the road ahead is tough for Sri Lanka, but it will have to make some serious sacrifices if it wants to return to pre-crisis, pre-pandemic levels. The government of Sri Lanka has said that it is expecting as much as 5 billion USD in loans next year from multilateral agencies besides an IMF deal. The government is also aiming to raise up to 3 billion US dollars via restructuring of state assets. The island nation's worst economic crisis in more than seven decades has resulted in widespread unrest due to shortages of food and fuel. Its then president Gotabaya Rajapaksa was ousted in July. Additional funds are critical for the country that is already saddled with a public external debt of 40.6 billion US dollars, of which it owes 22% to Chinese creditors. Apart from what we get from the get from the um, uh, getting from IMF, you, you are looking at all the others, the multilaterals put together another four to five billion. Uh, to purpose and then investment if we can have further three, four, by f three to five billion next year in terms of investment. Uh, there is and also uh, probably president is in, uh, interested in restructuring uh, some of the institutions. So through that if we can raise two to three billion dollars then what happens that our treasury and the reserves become strength. In September, the country of 22 million reached an agreement with the IMF for a loan of 2.9 billion US dollars, which could be approved for dispersal next year. Sri Lanka was expecting to seek IMF board approval for the loan in December, but that has likely been pushed to January as the government works to lock in financing assurances from countries including China, Japan and India as well as private creditors. These countries have backed the restructuring efforts and Sri Lanka has shared documents, data with them. But we have made it very clear both to the IMF and to our multilateral partners and to our bilateral friends uh, that patience is running out and it is urgent uh, for the sake of Sri Lankans and, and, the, and the good health of the world economy. Overall, Sri Lanka's economy has improved with essential imports such as fuel and food becoming regular. Inflation, which edged over 70% earlier this year, is to 61% at the end of November, but the economy is expected to contract by about 8.7% this year. Moving on. 
India has historically remained a major exporter of spices and other agricultural produce. Indian tea remains a major brand across the world even today. The Indian tea industry is also creating a substantial amount of foreign exchange and high revenue for the country. Expanded product mix and strategic market growth have contributed significantly to Indian tea's reputation as one of the best in the world. Let's have a look at the perennially expanding story and understand how it has reached where it is today. With bamboo baskets on their backs, groups of these Assamese tea pickers are picking newly sprouted tea leaves. Primarily constituting of women, India's tea pickers play a significant role in the country's economy. Their dedication, commitment, and skills are apparent in the tea fields of Assam, the largest tea producing region of India. The contribution of a generation of hard-working tea estate workers, along with the combination of strong geographical indications and significant investments, have made India the second largest tea producing country in the world. Over the years, the tea industry in India has expanded rapidly, consuming vast tracts of land for tea plantations. Apart from the major tea-producing states of Assam, West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, and Kerala, tea-producing areas also include Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Meghalaya, Nagaland, and Tripura. We need more and more markets. Even non conventional areas, if one can popularize tea, what better option than that? So, uh, it's a healthy sign. And one, if we can convert uh, a, a place or geographical area where we can, where tea is not popular, and we can, uh, we can, uh, through our different marketing policies or different uh, ways and means, one can popularize tea. It provides an additional market. The Indian tea industry creates a substantial amount of foreign exchange and high revenue for the government. Expanded product mix and strategic market growth have contributed significantly to Indian tea's reputation as one of the best in the world. Certain varieties of tea are grown only in India and are in great demand across the world. The key players in the Indian tea industry offer their products in varying packaging options thereby expanding the overall market reach. India's total tea exports during 2021 to 2022 in quantity was 201 million kilograms. The total exports during January to April 2022 was 65 million kilograms and was valued at 215 million USD, a 9% increase from the same period in 2021. India's export price per kilogram has also seen a stable increase over the years. The main thing is that to capture and consolidate the market, the product mix and offering variations, options to the customers is of vital importance. Here the Indian tea industry has been doing very well. The new startups are there who are coming up with different, different flavors in different packaging styles and different options to choose from. The willingness and ability to experiment with tea blends has proved an impetus for the growth of the tea industry in India. People around the world are also now more aware of the potential health benefits of tea. Varieties such as green tea are expected to witness robust growth in the country in the coming years. Innovating and experimenting with regional flavors, India's tea companies are aiming to provide the elusive perfect cup. For many, their days begin and end with a satisfying cup of tea. If tea is what gets you through the day, India undoubtedly promises the best brands in the world.
Time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Residents in Hong Kong said they welcomed the government's decision to further loosen COVID-19 restrictions by scrapping a mandatory COVID-19 mobile application and ease movement control for international travellers. The government's move to scrap its mobility tracking app from Wednesday 14 December, which grants access to restaurants and venues such as gyms, clubs and salons, comes after mainland China dropped the requirement. Under the new regulations, travellers and all residents coming from overseas will be allowed into all local venues, provided they test negative for COVID-19 on arrival. The rules have weighed on Hong Kong's economy since early 2020, speeding up an exodus of businesses, expatriates and local families who departed amid a drive by Beijing to more closely control the former British colony. Hong Kong has closely followed China's zero-COVID policy since 2020, but began gradually easing restrictions in August, cutting mandated hotel quarantine to three days before scrapping it completely in September, more than two and a half years after the virus emerged. Leaders of the Islamist movement Hamas were defiance in a choreographed display of force this week as one of the most hardline right-wing governments in Israel's history looks set to take office later this month. The rally after a year that has seen some of the worst violence in the occupied West Bank in more than a decade and a brief conflict in Gaza comes as Netanyahu prepares to take office at the head of a coalition united in Likud party with the clutch of hardline religious parties. Tens of thousands of Hamas supporters filled the square as solemn music boomed out over loudspeakers and black uniform members of the movement's armed wing marched through the crowd. Born out of the Muslim Brotherhood movement in the late 1980s, Hamas assumed power in Gaza after defeating the rival Fatah movement in elections in 2006 and has maintained a steadfast hostility to Israel. But ever since it fought a 10-day war with Israel that ended in a ceasefire more than a year ago, relations between the two sides on the ground have been, if not tranquil, then at least under a very sort of control. A high-level meeting of ASEAN Japan's Smart Cities Network was recently held at Fukushima Prefecture in Japan. After the earthquake that shook the region in 2011, the Fukushima prefecture is recovering slowly and strongly. The Aizu Wakamatsu city of Fukushima prefecture is transforming into a digital smart city. This technological experience is being shared by all the ASEAN countries. Marking the occasion, Dr. Masafumi Mori, who is the advisor to the Japanese Prime Minister, announced the cause and importance of the meeting. アセアンスマートシティネットワークにおいてもそれぞれの国都市でスマートシティプロジェクトが推進されているものと理解をしているところでございます。日本政府としてもスマートシティの実現に向けた国内外の取り組みを積極的に推進しているところであります。the Aizu Wakamatsu Smart City model seeks citizens and visitors' comfortability. Key points are the visualization of various data to make social life more convenient, the acceleration of renewable energy generation, and the fulfillment of tourism based on rich history and fresh agricultural products. One of the Smart City projects, Robot Test Field, is developing. It aims to prevent disaster damage and realize convenient social life by robot. The mission of the drone robot is to decrease disaster damage and protect human life. In 2019, Fukushima suffered typhoon and landslide by heavy rain. Drone robots flew above the damaged area and gathered disaster information quickly. Various companies are developing disaster rescue robots. Fukushima intends to enhance its disaster preparedness measures all over the world. Fukushima attracted ASEAN participants with local food and traditional culture. Japanese giant Keisyo recently celebrated the 40-year anniversary 
of one of its best selling and celebrated watch G Shock at Roppongi in Tokyo city. This was the celebration of history and success of the firm as well as the product. The watch is artistic as well as sporty. The G-Shock watch was developed in 1983, keeping in mind the concept of absolute toughness. Something that's all brand new, The model MRG has also been developed on the same concept of G-Shock and has been redesigned accordingly. The G-Shock model was developed by keeping in mind the need of customers and constantly dodging all challenges in the industry. Casio keeps this spirit alive. Moving on. The 40-day bone-chilling winter phase, also known as the Chillai color in Kashmir, manifests itself in the form of ice-capped mountains and snow-covered homes. It is said to be the harshest phase of the year. However, there is one more aspect associated with this phase, which provides a pleasant and elegant showcase of the Kashmiri cultural heritage. Jashni Chillai Kalan is one such event. Shopian town of India's Union Territory, Jammu in Kashmir, hosted the event this year. Have a look. A jubilant, enthusiastic crowd gathered as the annual Jashni Chilei Kala was organized in Shopia district of Jammu and Kashmir. Like every other year, the festival was primarily aimed at encouraging Kashmiri culture and provided visitors a glimpse into Kashmiri handicrafts and cuisine. The motto of festival was to endorse tourism and maintain safeguard and revive the uniqueness and richness of Kashmiri history. A spectacular musical event in which artists from across the valley participated enthralled the audience. Stirring performances raised the temperature quotient amidst the winter chill as audience grooved and sung along the performances. Several cultural women adorned Kashmiri attire and performed beautifully. Clan हो रहा है वो बहुत ही अच्छा प्रोग्राम है और हमें अच्छा लग रहा है खासकर कि अगर ऐसे और ज्यादा प्रोग्राम होते तो यूथ के लिए अच्छा था खासकर जो आर्टिस्ट है उनको और ज्यादा ऐसे प्रोग्राम्स मिलने चाहिए क्योंकि इसमें हमारा जो रोजगार है वो इसी से जुड़ा है The festivities in Kashmir Valley are special and heart touching for the people living there the government has been endeavouring to bring harmony and joy amongst the people of Kashmir ever since its neighbour Pakistan launched operations to disturb peace and foment trouble in the region. Youth is the future of Kashmir. Because you know that the people who are under 30 or 40 years old want to see the future of Kashmir. And in the past two years, the experience of the people is that people are very... क्या बोलते हैं प्रोएक्टिवली वो एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन को सपोर्ट कर रहे हैं तो इस प्रोग्राम से क्या है कि उनको एक मदद मिले कि वो प्रशासन के और नजदीक आएंगे हमारी मदद करेंगे एक अच्छा सोसाइटी और अच्छा कश्मीर बनाएंगे। During Chile Kala, the cold in Kashmir reaches its zenith. The mountains of Kashmir are roofed with snow for weeks, and the imminent Dal Lake too attains the freezing point. It's this time of the year in Kashmir when snow refills the valley's glaciers and replenishes the perennial reservoirs that fill streams, rivers and lakes during the warm months. So you have seen how Chilai Kalan is both cold and beautiful. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.